Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. Today I want to share with you a poem by the beat poet Diane de Prima. Although when we think of the major poets of the beat generation, many of us would not think of de Prima or any other woman, she was actively involved both literarily and socially. She lived in New York and then later in San Francisco. She was active against the Vietnam War and interested in Buddhism and Gnosticism and even alchemy. She helped Amira Baraka edit the newspaper The Floating Bear, etc. From 1974 to 1997, De Prima taught poetry at the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics, along with fellow beat poets, including Allen Ginsberg and Anne Waldman, William Burroughs, Gregory Corso, and others. The poem I want to share with you today is called Rant, and it is one of De Prima's most well-known works. You cannot write a single line without a cosmology, a cosmogony laid out before all eyes. There's no part of yourself you can separate out saying, this is memory, this is sensation, this is the work I care about, this is how I make a living. It is whole. It is a whole. It always was whole. You do not make it so. There's nothing to integrate. You are a presence. You are an appendage of the work. The work stems from, hangs from, the heaven you create. Every man, every woman carries a firmament inside, and the stars in it are not the stars in the sky. Without imagination, there is no memory Without imagination, there's no sensation. Without imagination, there is no will, desire. History is a living weapon in your hand, and you have imagined it. It is thus that you find out for yourself. History is the dream of what can be. It's the relationship between things in a continuum of imagination. What you find out for yourself is what you select out of an infinite sea of possibility. No one can inhabit your world, yet it is not lonely. The ground of imagination is fearlessness. Discourse is a videotape of a movie, of a shadow play. But the puppets are in your hand, your counters in a multidimensional chess game, which is divination and strategy. The war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. The ultimate famine is the starvation of the imagination. It is death, to be sure, but the undead seek to inhabit someone else's world. The ultimate claustrophobia is the syllogism. The ultimate claustrophobia is it all adds up. Nothing adds up, and nothing stands in for anything else. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. There is no way out of a spiritual battle. There is no way you can avoid taking sides. There is no way you cannot have a poetics. No matter what you do, plumber, baker, teacher, you do it in the consciousness of making or not making your world. You have a poetics. You step into the world like a suit of ready-made clothes, or you etch it in light. Your firmament spills into the shape of your room, the shape of your poem, of your body, of your loves. A woman's life, a man's life, is an allegory. Dig it. There is no way out of the spiritual battle. The war is the war against the imagination. You can't sign up as a conscientious objector. The war of the worlds hangs here right now in the balance. It's a war for this world, to keep it a veil of soul-making. The taste in all our mouths is the taste of power, and it is bitter as death. Bring yourself home to yourself. Enter the garden. The guy at the gate with the flaming sword is yourself. The war is the war for the human imagination, and no one can fight it but you. 
and no one can fight it for you. The imagination is not only holy, it is precise. It is not only fierce, it is practical. Men die every day for the lack of it. It is vast and elegant. Intellectus means light of the mind. It is not discourse. It's not even language. The inner sun, the polis, it's constellated around the sun. The fire is central.